Howdy all, thanks for dropping by. This tutorial is going to give you enough CAD basics so that you can move around the interface. Looking at the interface, I have my model space. This is the unbounded coordinate system. If you're looking for paper in the CAD file, it doesn't exist. Rather, you have an unbounded coordinate system into which you can place entities at any scale. As a matter of fact, the interface is considered to be scaleless, and they have abstracted the unit of measure away from any measurement system to just say that we are measuring here in drawing units. So it's up to you to determine what one drawing unit equals, be that an inch or a millimeter or an angstrom or a light year. It doesn't matter in here. You've got an unbounded coordinate system. When it comes time for us to print, that creates a problem. This unbounded model space creates a problem of repeatable printable output. So what the clever people at AutoCAD came up with is the idea of the model space and the paper space or the layout as they're referred to nowadays. The CAD file can have as many layouts as you want. Each layout can contain entities as well and each layout can contain a special entity called a viewport. Viewports allow a view through the paper space into the underlying model space. So here's my entities in the model space and then here are my entities in this layout laid up for print here. Okay, so we'll swing back around and pick up more on that a little bit later. Again, this is going to be CAD basics. So one of the things that we need to learn real quick is that our mouse wheel is our zoom and our pan command. If you spin the mouse wheel, you'll zoom the interface in and out. If you press the mouse wheel down so that you click the button that's directly underneath it, you'll start the pan command for as long as the button is held. As soon as you release the button, the pan command is, is turned off. So again, we really want you to get used to driving the interface with just the mouse. Okay, so let's just add some entities to this drawing space. I'll go to my CAD tools tab page here and I'll select the line command. And here I'll just click and make a quick little mountain range. When I'm done with the command I right click and I click done. Alternately you could have clicked the enter key. There are three ways to select things in Wirecad you can directly click them and they'll be added to the selection set. You can drag a window around them. and There are actually two select windows. The first one is called a containing window. It's created by left clicking the mouse and then dragging from left to right. Entities that are wholly contained in the window will be added to the selection set. Anything that's not wholly contained will be excluded from the selection set. You'll also notice when I'm dragging in that direction that the background is blue. The other select window is called a crossing window and it's done the opposite direction. We start in the right and we drag to the left. In this case any entity that touches this window, that crosses the window or is wholly contained within the window will be added to the selection set. Selection sets are important because if we're going to work any kind of CAD function on this entity or group of entities, we need the selection set. So once I've created a selection set, I can do things like copy and move and scale and all of these other modification types of commands. Here I'm going to create a copy. So I'll click the copy command. In my command line prompt here, I'll be prompted for the copy from point. This is an offset copy. You can use any of the reference points in the drawing or you can enter coordinates directly into the command line. Here I'll just click arbitrarily here. So you'll notice that I'm now prompted for the to point. So I've submitted the from point when I clicked here and now I'm going to submit the to point by clicking here. Okay, and Wirecad keeps me in this loop to continue copying entities until we click the escape key. That's the copy command. 
and we're going to use that that's you're welcome to use that in Wirecat at any at any point another interesting thing in the CAD space is that when you select an object it will display grips grips are these little blue squares the grips when clicked will perform some function here on the line entity clicking a grip adjusts either the start or the end point of the line but depending on the entity the behavior will be different entities can be grouped together and named in CAD speak these are referred to as blocks blocks are collections of entities blocks can be part of the drawing but don't necessarily have to be displayed in the drawing in CAD speak we say that the block is the definition for the entity and when we actually put it in the drawing that that becomes an insert of that block blocks have one characteristic that gets in our way sometimes and that's that they are considered to be immutable once you've created a block you can't change it. It's very difficult to change anything that's that's part of a block. If you need to make a quick change to an instance of a block, you can change the grip block attribute mode in Wirecad such that individual grips are displayed for individual items within the block, allowing you to change that particular instance, but not all instances of the block. The standard mode in Wirecad is for blocks to display a single grip. That grip, when clicked on, will invoke the move command for that block. If there are any wires attached to that block, when doing a grip move, those wires will reroute. Okay, now let's talk about individual entities and their properties. When I select an item or a group of items, I can get to the property level data for that item simply by clicking the drawing properties tool panel wherein I get a property grid that shows me all of the entity specific properties for the selected entity or entities if I have a selection set then the property grid will show me the common properties for all of the entities in the selection set or I can scroll through and and select an individual entity and see its properties. With nothing in the selection set, the property window will show you the general document properties. These are properties common to the document, not entity specific. Of particular interest in the CAD file is the layer structure. Each entity can be attached to a specific layer and inherit properties from that layer including its visibility the layers are contained in the drawing layers collection from the layers control I can define new layers I can change the visibility of layers I can lock layers so that entities residing on those layers cannot be selected I can set the pen color for that layer the line type and line weight for that layer or for entities on that layer. Now, not all entities will have to obey the layer structure. So, for example, I see here the vid layer is set to color number zero or red. If I assign this entity to the vid layer, so this entity now inherits its color from the layer if I change the pen color for this entity from by layer to let's say that color right there then you can see that this color is ignoring the layer color and painting its own color so item set by layer will inherit the layer structure color or line type or line weight items hard-coded in here within the property window will ignore those okay so one last little tidbit on layouts and viewports and page borders I'm gonna to switch to the ANSI E layout wherein I have placed a page border that is sized to the ANSI E paper side there is a viewport here if I select right here I can see in my property grid that the item is of type viewport 
that viewport is not looking at the entities within the model space. In order to pan, zoom, or position this viewport so that it's looking at the underlying model space, I have to activate it. In order to activate it, I just double click anywhere within the boundaries of the viewport. You'll notice once I have activated the viewport that my crosshair is now constrained to the viewport. It no longer roams the entire layout, but is constrained within that viewport. That lets me know that the viewport's active, and now I can use the CAD command zoom extents to find all entities within the view. That's on the view tab page and zoom extents. It's available here and it's available here on this button bar on the right hand side of the drawing interface underneath the vertical scroll bar. I can also type the, the two key shortcut ZE followed by the enter key and Wirecad will then zoom all of the extent in the underlying model space into the view of the viewport. My pan commands from my mouse wheel and my zoom commands from my mouse wheel are now active and positioning that view into this viewport. Okay, so that's enough for now on CAD Basics. Hopefully that's enough to get you started and you found this tutorial useful. Remember, you can download Wirecad from Wirecad.com. Give it a spin. If you get stuck, give us a call or send us an email. We are here to help you with your design endeavor. Thanks for watching.